The autumn wind is a pirate, blustering in from sea. With a rollicking song, he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. His face is weather-beaten. He wears a hooded sash, with a silver hat about his head, and a bristling black mustache. He growls as he storms the country, a villain big and bold. And the trees all shake and quiver and quake as he robs them of their gold. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. There's been a little controversy over the Raiders taking cornerback Damon Arnett in the first round of the 2020 NFL Draft. But I'm telling you right now, he is the real deal. Head coach John Gruden has heaped a bunch of praise on him, but I'm telling you, he deserves it all. Listen. I like Arnett as much as Okuda. Uh, if you look at the production, Arnett's got more production. Uh, he played last year hurt with a broken right wrist. I think he's the best tackler in this draft. I think he's an old-school, bump-and-run Raider cornerback that's physical and nasty. He reminds me a lot. I'm not going to uh, guarantee this, but he reminds me a lot of Aqib Tlaib, a guy that we drafted in Tampa uh, several years ago. He's a guy that has great confidence in himself. He comes from the big arena at Ohio State, and uh, the bigger the game, the better he's played. I think Vegas is going to love Arnett. Uh, he's matured. He's grown up. And this guy's learned some difficult lessons, and I think he's responded. He went back to Ohio State to prove that he could get it done, and he's got a son. He's he's really got a, a great future ahead of himself. An old school bump and run Raider corner. They haven't had that since Namdia Samoa. With his first first round pick in 2013, then GM Reggie McKenzie swung and missed badly with DJ Hayden. Then he swung and missed badly again in 2015 when he signed Sean Smith to a four-year, $38 million deal. He just wasn't fast enough. Then in 2017, in the first round of the draft, he swung and missed badly again, this time with Garyon Conley. Then in 2018, Gruden, without a GM, swung and missed badly himself with Daryl Worley, who, like Sean Smith, didn't have enough speed. Then in 2019, GM Mike Mayock came aboard and struck gold in the second round with Trayvon Mullen. Mullen is a big physical bump and run corner that's disruptive at the catch point. After going through his rookie learning curve at the beginning of the season, he started to play well. And down the stretch of the season, he started to resemble a shut down corner. In week 13, speedster Tyree Kill only had two catches for 19 yards on five targets on him. Then in week 16, Keenan Allen didn't catch a pass on him with only one attempt thrown his way. And to go along with him, Mayock drafted Damon Arnett in the first round in 2020. As you can see there, Arnett's a bit of a nasty boy. That doesn't have much to do with the play, but it sets a physical tone. Oh. This one isn't going to work out the way he wanted to, but he's still being physical. Here you're going to barely see it in the corner of the screen, but he's going to set the physical tone again. Now with the tone set, the receivers on that team are more focused on being physical back with Arnett. And if he wasn't so worried about Arnett, he would have caught the ball. Just like a traditional Raider quarter, 
Arnett is not afraid to stick his head in there in the run game. It doesn't even bother him to get in the box. He brings that force on the corner. Here he is lined up in the slot and he makes the play when he has to there. Arnett is a sure tackler too. Now we're on to his coverage and what I don't like. I am nitpicking here. Sometimes when he plays off for Bales, he's too passive in coverage. And it can allow easy completions. Sometimes he just loses his edge and his urgency when he plays off. Sometimes. See, he needs to drive on that a little harder. He needed to drive on this one too. A good throw would have made this a touchdown. He's a little too lax on this one too. If he has the speed to catch him after the catch, he has the speed to close on it and prevent the catch. He's just too busy looking at the quarterback here. But that's only sometimes he can play off man. Watch the play and route recognition and bam, jumps it. He puts his foot in the ground and goes and gets it here. A good throw would have been a pick six. Watch him drive on this one and his reward is going to be an interception. He needs to drive on it like that all the time when he's an off man. Here we go again with playing route recognition. He's going to plant his foot in the ground and go get that thing. Oh, and they're not going to catch him. He's going to go with it 96 yards for a touchdown. Impressed man, he doesn't play. It's hard to get anything on him. He stays tight to opposing receivers. In 2019, it was Arnett that gave up the lowest quarterback rating in press coverage. Not Okuda. Here the ball's gonna bobble around a bit and Arnett's gonna stare after it to make sure it's incomplete. Here he's gonna get his hands on the receiver and he's not gonna have a chance. And he can play in the slot too as he has the feet to stay with those quick little receivers. Arnett only gave up one touchdown in each of his four seasons at Ohio State. And part of that is because he doesn't give up the deep ball. He has the speed to stay with receivers all the way down the field. He doesn't have a man here, but has the speed to get all the way over to help Okuda out with the deep ball going his way. Here he's going to get beat off the line, but he has the makeup speed to get right back in the play. And he has the body control to adjust to the back shoulder fade. So in the words of Snoop Dogg, he can't be faded.
Another reason why he's only given up one touchdown in each of his four years is that he doesn't give much up in the red zone. Oh no, he's stingy in his own end zone. Indiana should have learned that in 2018, right? But they didn't. They kept trying them again in 2019. They tried them twice in a row down there. And again for good measure. I guess that's what happens when you have Okuda on the other side. Listen to Chris Carter address that speed issue. He's got good speed. He's got better game speed than he showed at the combine. At the combine, he was dealing with a couple things. He had a hamstring and a back issue that I believe that he runs a lot faster than that com than, than that combine time. That combine time was a four, five, six, but it was more than his hamstring and back issue that made that time slower. Instead of him jumping the gun, the gun jumped him here. 11 one hundredths of a second already went off the clock and he hasn't even moved yet. This is why I believe Mayock's time of 4-4-3, back and hamstring issues and all. Now look at where Okura is at the 11 one hundredth of a second mark. This is for those of you that want to say, oh, well the timing was the same for everyone. No it isn't as Okura is clearly up at the 11 one hundredth mark. Don't believe the hype on all the electronic timing crap. That's why teams send their own scouts to time prospects. Mayock had Arnett at 4-4-3, and when Arnett showed up to training camp, he flashed that speed, flying to the football, and staying with 4-2 speedster Henry Ruggs. Hey, tell him stop playing with the net! Tell him stop playing with the net! Hey. Tell him stop playing with the net! Arnett has claimed to be a 4-3 guy all along. If he can run a 4-4-3 with back and hamstring issues, that's believable. And it's even more believable when he can hang with rugs like that. Along with all the physical gifts and skills that Arnett possesses, he has mad swagger to go along with it. Is this primetime 2.0? Alright, maybe not, but he's what the Raiders need right now. So there was no reason to even keep Prince of Mukamura around. And Mullen already knows Arnett. We grew up together, uh, same area, uh, we're from the same city. Uh, he's always been a good guy, always been a good player. From Little League to Optimus, um, he's just got a lot of talent. He's a very talented person, he's very fast, quick, he got good instincts. And just seeing him out here every day and the way he grind, he, he's, just a, he's just a different dude. His but do you trust him? Uh, I trust him uh, tremendously uh, just because of the way he come to practice, his edge, the way he play, um, his energy level. Uh, he just have a lot of confidence in himself and that makes me have more confidence in him. Uh, he doesn't doubt himself. Uh, if, he, if he make a bad play, he's going to come back and make an even better play. Uh, he just have a different edge. Like as a rookie, he just have a great edge. There's not too much things I can say um, that's ba bad about Damon or even at all. Uh, I know he's going to continue to get better. Um, he's going to have a big role. Uh, and I know he's prepared and ready. And I have a lot of confidence in him. And I'm excited to see uh, how it's going to play out. What's not to like? Arnett is physical and will come up and play the run with ferocity and attitude. And in the passing game, he's a playmaker that dares you to throw the ball his way. And as far as his speed goes, it's been tested already in training camp by none other than fellow first round pick Henry Ruggs. And I'll have to say he passed that with flying colors. Combine Arnett with Mullen, the 2019 second round pick, and you have a dynamic corner tandem. Cause Arnett's the real deal. Thank you for watching. See you next time.